afternoon and happy Monday. Um, it's Monday. Motivational Monday is what I've been tagging these. And uh, today we're going to talk about how to use a vibration machine to accelerate weight loss benefits. And I'm going to add a little bit on their weight loss and toning. Um, you know, there's, there's a, a, a big category in weight loss and there's a few smaller tangents within there that I'm going to branch off into today. But one of the many uh, claims that is being marketed by vibration plates uh, and machines, there's lots of gimmicks on the market, but there, there really is uh, efficacy and some science to support the claims of using vibration machines to accelerate weight loss. And uh, today I'm going to give you a few uh, exercises to help improve uh, your weight loss goals, uh, maybe th some things you can add to your current routine. The big question is how and why do vibration machines help uh, accelerate weight loss? Well, the biggest struggle with weight loss, and I know I personally experienced this, part of the reason I got into the machines a few decades ago, well, decade and a half, it's been some time. Um, you know, sometimes you have the best of intentions and the discipline is there, but, but the body, maybe it has a deficiency and that there's reasons that you can't partake with the veracity you'd like in, in traditional uh, cardio activities or, or, or weight training perhaps. So, so some of the ways that we exercise and become active to facilitate, uh, facilitate that weight loss and, and toning, um, you know, sometimes the exercises just aren't kind to our body. So why the vibration machine shines in this category, of course, is, is you can get your muscles to a level of fatigue. You can do a variety of exercises on them, but there's minimal impact to the joints and and very often you know there's other side benefits as i call them uh you're going to manage pain swelling uh if you're moving and feeling better sometimes the fundamental exercises or routines to accomplish the weight loss um, can happen because the machine's making us feel and move better. So uh, that aside, you know, there's also recovery. So, you know, if, if you are doing exercises and, and you're hitting the gym and you're doing some cardio and you're doing all the things that you should be doing, but you're paying the price, uh, you, you could use your machine for recovery, you know, manage those aches and pains, get some stretching, some flexibility, uh, amp up that recovery so um, that you can uh, get back to the routine the next day. Hello, Cindy Roberts. Welcome. And oh, thank you for spelling my name right. That's that's a treat. Um, I, uh, if, if you are just joining us, let me know where you are joining us from, how your Monday goes. I don't know about you, but Mondays are kind of I'm here to give you motivation, but Mondays are kind of my crazy day. All those people that have been processing thoughts about their vibration machines over the weekend are, are connecting out to me. So today you can see I am surrounded by everything Life Pro. I'm going to be working on my Rumblex 4D Pro model. Primarily, I'm going to be spending time in the oscillating mode. Hello, Jane. Hello, Cassandra. Um, hello, Carol. Awesome. Good mix. Uh, I can guarantee we've got Lynn here from New York. Guarantee you guys are a little warmer than where I'm coming to you from. A little warmer here now, but one of the, the big reasons I think vibration machines are so good at assisting with weight loss is they make you feel warm. They warm you up. I love using mine before I go for a snow shovel outside these days uh, and afterwards. So I'm going to go over to my machine. I'm going to give you, while I'm giving you some positions, I'm going to talk about some of the ways that you can use these machines to ramp up those weight loss results, those toning results. So the first part of the routine I'm going to be going over are some lower body exercises. Why, Debbie, are we doing lower body exercises? Because they are the best bang for your buck. Those glutes, uh, the quads, the big group of muscles below the waist, it takes more uh, nutrition and oxygen and, and energy to, to, to do a squat than it does to, to lift up a cup of coffee. So you want to use those big muscle groups. You want to get them to a point of fatigue, which I'm going to go over here. Fatigue is, is different for everyone. Many of the trainers out there uh, may not love me, but to me, exercise is a prescribed amount of time that you're spending doing a position or an activity. Uh, to me, the body changes and the fuel gets burning when you get yourself personally 
to that level of fatigue, whatever that might look like. Look like our range of motion varies. Uh, you know, we're all dealing with different deficiencies, but a good basic squat and perhaps a, a lunge would be the two number one exercises I would recommend if you want to ramp up your weight loss. Um, there, there's a lot of variations in those two uh, different positions, but I'm only going to go over a few with you today with, with, with what you may have around the home. If you don't do squats regularly or you think you do squats and, and they're just not maybe being effective for you sometimes it's a technique thing and and once you kind of understand the basics of, of how to do a squat adding variations and progressing to, to continue uh, on your journey is, is very easy to do so we're just going to start with a very basic how do I do a squat because as I just stated a squat is going to be the best bang for your buck to accelerate weight loss. Now, if you're dealing, you always notice if you've been with me in a session in the past, I'm always seated in a stool because sometimes I talk to the point where my legs can't keep up with my mouth. Uh, that's part of it. But if you're dealing with a deficiency, you're recovering from surgery, you're just getting started on your health journey and, and you deal with fatigue and maybe just don't have the endurance yet, having a stool is, is going to be your number one friend when, when you're starting to do things like squats. We are pushing to fatigue the legs. So you might want to do a combination of some standing and seated exercises. For today's purpose, if you can't stand the durations or, or stay with the durations that I'm imposing today, just take a break and keep your feet moving on the machine until we move on to the next position. So use your stool to take a break. You can also use it, perhaps you're not able to, to do weight-bearing activity yet. You maybe got issues going on with your back or you've had some recent hip surgery. There's still ways that you can partake in using your machine, keeping that lymph and circulation going in a seated position. And it's also an awesome exercise tool. One of my favorite ways to burn the quads and the glutes out very quickly is a short little routine called a sit to stand, which many of you may be doing as a recovery exercise, but it's also a really good way to work on the technique, fire up those big groups of muscles, boost that metabolism, and burn some calories. So. I'm going to use the machine in oscillating mode, in pivoting mode. What mode or what type of vibration you, you use is not as important as the exercises you are encompassing. I might get in trouble for that. There's a lot of opinion and variation as far as what's best for weight loss, but it really does boil down to positions that are going to get you the results that you want. The settings, the speeds, the type of movement are going to add some challenge, and I certainly do have some preferences. But as, as far as, you know, what is the most effective thing to do on a vibration machine for weight loss, it's going to be the right exercise positions. So I recommend, I'm going to bring mine up to a mid-speed. I'm working on a Rumblex 4D Pro today. And I'm going to bring it up to about the 30 range. Where you start and where you begin is, is really going to vary on your experience on the machine. But to start out, I want your feet no more than hip width apart. And uh, for those of you that are going to do some squats and we're going to burn some calories today, I want you keeping a couple of things in mind when you're doing your squats. If you're going to do the work and you're going to sweat, guys, you may as well make it effective and get the results that you're looking for. So the biggest thing with a squat is you want to make sure those heels are planted. 70 to 80% of your body weight is on the heels. If in your standing positions or your squats you're noticing it more in the toes or the shins or the knees, the body's really lazy. It's always going to try and find an easier way to get things done. And the first thing it tends to do is it shifts our weight forward. So if you feel it more at the ankle joint or just the knees or where you feel the vibration but nothing up to the thighs, press the weight back onto those heels. Even lift the tips of your toes to make sure that you're not cheating and putting your weight on your toes. So that's the first biggest thing that you're going to notice. So for your squat, it's, you know, for, for those of you that are doing these exercises regularly, these may seem very basic. If you want to move up and down, if you want to pick up some weights, go for it. Whatever you're doing safely on the floor can be incorporated on the machine. For those of you looking for just getting started tips, I want you sitting down like you're getting ready to sit in this stool, but just go to your low point and hold still. I don't want you fighting the machine. I don't want you resisting the machine. Just make sure the weight is on your heels. Hold a good position. Try engaging that core. If the balance is good, maybe put your hands on your hips. And I just want you staying here until you can't stay here anymore. Um, if you feel like you need to fight the machine or, 
or you're starting to lose your position, that's a sign of fatigue. If you, if you feel like you absolutely have to stand up or sit down or you're gonna die, go ahead and do so now. If this isn't terribly challenging for you at this point, feel free to go lower. You know, work within your range of motion. The harder the position for you personally, your body type, the quicker you're gonna get to fatigue. Maybe you wanna go down and hit that bar stool. Very slow, dynamic movement. If you are able to move and you feel comfortable to move on the platform, I don't want your technique going all over the place. Just a very good, slow, fluid movement. The faster you go, the more cardio effect you might feel, but the less you're going to feel the load build and, and, and work those muscles and burn those calories in that fashion. Okay? So that's a basic squat. Okay? I would recommend, Debbie, how often and how long do I do this for? It's really going to depend on you, your endurance levels, what your schedule looks like. For me, the biggest tip I can give you uh, as far as time of day, if you're post 40 like me, you know, our metabolism isn't what it was in our, in our 20s. So you try and get, you know, two to three minutes of what I call mean legs. Might be squats, could be lunges. I'll show you a couple of those here shortly. Uh, but a good squat is, is the best way to get those quads and those glutes, those big groups of muscles fired up. If you're doing it early in the day, you're going to raise and elevate that metabolism so that everything you're doing out throughout the course of the day, your idle rate is going to take a few more calories out of the bank. So it's going to equate to that overall weight loss goal. So try and get them done early in the day. For me personally, I homeschool, I'm busy. I, I, for me, it's habitually easier to get them done early in the day than they're out of the way. I might do some other things later on, some feel good, some upper body or some core, but try and get those legs done. And if your goal is weight loss, we're not talking 20 minutes or an hour workout here, two to three minutes, make those positions challenging. If they're not challenging you within 30 seconds to a minute, we're going to move to our first variation. And I think I showed you guys this in my session last week. If you haven't invested in the yoga wheels, you're going to like them. Usually I use a ball, but now I have a new favorite. So one of the big things with weight loss, more on the toning side that a lot of my ladies are trying to accomplish, is toning. That part that wears out the jeans first, the hips, okay? So we can take the first variation I want to show you is we're going to, and you can do this seated if, you, if you're pooped out at this point or you're just learning these exercises, but I want you to take a ball. If you've got the yoga wheels, I'm using the littler one, and I want you to tuck it between your legs just above the knees, and it's forcing these inner and outer group of muscles to also become a part of that equation. So you can take that basic squat, add other components to it, and get more done. So... Get back into that basic position. We're going to put this between the legs, just above the knees. And again, just hold. Okay? And you're going to notice fatigue feels different. I'm feeling different muscles interact in different areas, okay? So that's just one variation that you can do with that. I'm going to take, I see a very big question just got posted. I don't think, Brandon, this is an appropriate, Brandon, that's an appropriate time to be posting such questions. Um, okay, Nancy from Seattle. Um, Simi from Calgary. Hello, Simi from Calgary. I'm in Didsbury. Uh, Bronx, Columbia. Hi, Kim Johnson. How are you enjoying your cryofrost? Watching from Illinois, Mary. Lynn is here from Buffalo. I think I said this one. Jane from Connecticut. Cassandra from Houston. Cindy, I've said hello to. Carol. Cool. Look at all these hard doers today. Okay, well, I guess you want me to get back to killing your legs. Nancy from Seattle. Yes, if you're just joining us, let, it, let us know where you are from. Uh, you may have intermittent trouble with the feed. Technology is great when it works. I'm hardwired, but if you're dealing with a wireless device or any interference, there may be intermittents, but I'm just going to keep going. There will be a recorded version of this later on for those of you that maybe had, had uh, disruption issues or joined us late. They always post up a, a recorded version of this after the fact as well. Other things I want to show you about weight loss. So uh, we've kind of gone over a few basics with our squat. I want to switch gears now to something more like a lunge. Why would I want to do a lunge? 
because it's different. Sometimes you want to mix things up. Variety is the spice of life. Uh, perhaps you have a deficiency on one side and you want to give one side attention or you're trying to develop one side and, and bring it up to more of a, a unison strength between the two le uh, legs. Perhaps you have a sensitivity. A lot of the reason I, I, I teach my clients to do lunges is if you deal with vertigo or migraines or, or you have you know, degenerative disc in the neck and you're sensitive and just not comfortable doing an entire routine or standing on the plate, a lunge is a really good way to change where the vibration is going to affect you as far as a total body effect. Now, the difference is, of course, we're going to have to do two reps. So how to do a good lunge? A good lunge is going to vary for everyone based on their range of motion and your level of comfort. If you're not completely stable, you might want to put a bar height stool uh, in front of you for your fingertips. The biggest mistake when we, when we do a lunge for the first time on the technique side is we don't think and we stand ourselves like we're a balance beam. So one foot's on the machine and the back foot's in line with that foot and we're wobbling all over the place. What I want you to do is take that back foot and widen it up so that you've got a wider stance with that first foot on the machine. It's kind of the rudder. It's going to be the one that's going to be holding your mass. So you don't want to have your feet directly in front and behind of each other. You'll spend too much time just trying to stabilize yourself. Okay? So don't start with a super wide stance. You don't need to go as wide as possible. That's not where all the benefits are. It's the technique. Pay attention to your technique. So line your foot up, you know, at the midpoint or a little bit closer if the balance ain't so good. As I said, widen up your stance on that back foot a little bit. The big thing with your lunge is you want to make sure this front leg is nice and straight and you're going to bend. Come up. I'm up on my toe. How low you can go with this back leg, how comfortable depends on you. But you want to make sure that this is good and straight and you're going to feel the sensation in that front leg. I want you again to just hold still. You should be fatiguing within 30 seconds to a minute. If you are not fatiguing within 30 seconds to a minute, make your position more challenging. Maybe go lower. Maybe add some dynamic movement. Maybe get some hand weights. You are only limited by your imagination, okay? Now, because we're doing one leg independently of the other, you would, of course, need to switch this around. My machine went off. Debbie was rambling 10 minutes. Go figure. Now, let's bring this up. Okay. Okay. This foot is stationary. This is straight up and down like a table. We're going to bend that. And there's always like a good side. So you got like a weak side and a bad side. I think that's part of it. But we have a tendency to put that strong leg forward without realizing. And I think on the second rep, your body just knows what it's in for. So hold still. If you do have joint mobility, arthritis issues, and you're not used to doing these exercises, you do not need to move. Just get into that range of motion you're comfortable with. You should feel like you're engaged. If you wanted to ramp this up, you can engage that glute. Clench the glute while you're doing this. Okay. And again, you could add some weights. Um, there, there's probably a, a few things that you have in your arsenal. Adding weight, so I'm just going to touch on that point, uh, is a really easy way to burn more calories, add strength. You're not going to become a big bodybuilder just because you've added some mass to your workout. But for a lot of my ladies out there, it is a quick way to fatigue faster. Perhaps you are dealing with hypermobility or inflammation. Get to fatigue as quick as you can with good technique and do lots of short little reps instead of building perhaps those durations out where it's irritating joints. One of the big advantages of a vibration plate for your weight loss exercises is it does reduce time it does reduce impact and it gets i think it gets those muscles to a point where they can get to fatigue before the joints or, or other ailments get in the way and deter us from doing that so a good squat a good lunge are going to be your two best exercises you don't need a whole big program to lose weight targeting and toning certain body parts are a different group of exercises you could do crunches all day long you're not going to burn the calories that a squat or a lunge will. They're just tiny little muscle groups. Things like crunches are, are to me, more of a defining, a toning position. You know, once you've gotten down to the point where we're seeing that six-pack, then we can tone and shape it. That's not going to be your biggest bang for your buck as far as burning calories, which is the goal with the weight loss piece. Now, I'm just going to check once more back in for questions, and then I'm going to show you some stuff on the ground now. 
Da, da, da. Lauren, if you want to get rid of Brandon's comment here, I'm not, I'm not here. Hello, Lorenzi um, from Boston. I hope the weather's a little bit kinder there. Diana from Houston says hi and let's go. Are you still squatting? Did I leave you on the machine? You can stop if you're dying, for those of you that didn't say stop. <laughs> uh, and Cara from Baton, Baton Rouge. I love Baton Rouge. Um, and Joyce from Illinois. Welcome, welcome. I'm going over weight loss tips. And any of you that have seen me uh, do a session in the past, it's all about squats and lunges. It's about engaging those thighs, those glutes, those big muscle groups that are going to burn those calories for us. If you are post 40, like me, try and do, even if it's a minute, do something. Fire those legs up first thing in the morning or when you get moving. It'll boost your energy, your mental clarity, and it's going to elevate that metabolism so that what you're doing throughout the course of the day is shaving off a few more calories. If you are dealing with fatigue or, or, or medical conditions and, and you just can't do long durations, you could do a couple sets. You know, do a couple of, you know, three sets of, of 15 seconds or 10 seconds. Um, don't be discouraged because you're not able to do things exactly the same way that I am. Hello from West Melbourne, Florida and Savoy, Illinois. Um, also from Bradenton, Florida. Awesome turnout for my ramblings today. Okay, let's get to some other stuff. So we're going to talk a little bit outside of weight loss. One of the big questions I get. So we've done the, the squats, we've done the lunges, you know, we're losing the weight or we have lost the weight. There's a big confusion sometimes I find in the marketing and the questions, weight loss and toning. You know, obviously, you know, those that are losing weight want to tone, but sometimes people say they want to tone and they actually mean they want to lose weight. And for me, you know, if, if you're looking at losing 40, 50, 60 plus pounds, we need to be doing some squats. We need to be doing some lunges. We need to be doing very simple but consistently regular. That's the key with weight loss. You've got to do this regularly. I find personally for myself and a lot of my clients using these machines, don't make it some big fancy routine. If you're not an exercise guru now, keep it simple. Three, four exercises that you know you can do effectively, do them regularly, and you're going to be way better off in the long run because the consistency is going to be the key here. Um, once the range of motion improves and, and strength improves, there's going to be other things. There's going to be loose and 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 saggy skin, maybe there's dimples, maybe there's cellulite. So as range of motion um, is, is a factor with these machines, if you have it and you have the ability to get down on the ground, I'm going to show you some lower body massage positions that you can do to boost uh, circulation and lymph more directly in localized areas. Perhaps you're dealing with varicose or spider veins. Um, perhaps it just feels good because you went for a big long walk and your legs are sore. So there's lots of ways you can massage below the waist. Many of my clients are doing these exercises in conjunction with their squats and their lunges because we want to improve the skin tone and tighten it after we're starting to see those weight loss goals. Hello, Miss Wilson. Um, hello, Kathy. Should I do these in the morning or can I do these in the after again in the afternoon? You know, if, if you're pushing yourself to fatigue, you know, probably three to five minutes on the leg should be sufficient in the morning. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to do some other things uh, in the afternoon, that's fine. But these are a, a time saver. You know, one of the biggest things I, I always get confused about is, you know, can I do it again or can I do it longer? Well, a lot of times you bought this to reduce the amount of time you spend doing those things. So if you'd like to do another session in the afternoon, that's fine. But make sure if the goal is weight loss. With one session a day, I want to make sure that you're pushing to fatigue, you're pushing for broke. And if you're post 40 or, you know, when it, depending on what your nine to five is, I find early in your day, whenever that is, is the better way to get that metabolism rocking and rolling and, and, and complement the work that you're putting in. Um, how does the machine help efforts with basic exercise? Why are the squats plus machine better than squats themselves? Diana, for a couple of reasons, probably the main appeal of these machines is they're ultra low impact, even less impact than walking. So sometimes getting those muscles to a point of fatigue where, you know, hypermobility or joint pain, um, is a concern. You know, sometimes the joints give out before the muscles do in, 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 you know, the treadmill or walks. 
the, you'll find with the machine, uh, especially in the static type movements where you're not maybe moving up and down in those positions, you can get those muscles to a level of fatigue and fire them up with minimal or, or no impact to the joints whatsoever. So that's the big appeal. How are they more effective? There's a little bit more going on than just exercise. So we're ramping up the lymph, the circulation. Um, by association, there's, there's often pain management, a reduction in swelling. So there, there's more benefits occurring within those same exercises by adding the stimulus. The machine is, think of it as an environment. It's an environment that, that ramps up the effects of what you may or may not do on the floor, giving you more benefits. Uh, post 50 and try to lose weight. Thank you for these tips. I am almost post 50. This is my 50 year and uh, coming just so you guys know a little bit about me. I'm down about 55, 60 pounds since I got into this a couple decades ago. I was not able to do the treadmill or the elliptical. Um, I had a pity party for about a year and I got bigger. I met my first vibration machine about 16 years ago and it didn't hurt. And, you know, so here's me 15 years later, but um, I never stuck with anything in my life and I've stuck with these 15 years and I'm now teaching you folks today. So I still have a bad knee. I, I was up for some partial knee replacement surgery, which I never did have done. So for me, they, they offered an ability to do the exercises I needed to do to get that weight back under control. And you know, it wasn't just about weight. It's about getting my life back. It was about getting strong, living my life and, and being able to walk up hills and, and into the grocery store without being laid up for two days after. Okay, so let's get into some of these massage positions. I'm going to get this out of the way. Now, I'm going to warn you, range of motion required. If you do not have it, you do not need to start here. If you cannot do a decent squat on the machine, you're going to have trouble. Now, it's not the getting down on the floor. It's the getting back up off the floor that presents the challenge in most cases. So if you're able to get yourself down and back up safely, you, you would maybe want to experiment with some of these options. I'm, again, what mode you do this in is entirely, in my opinion, a personal preference. I like using oscillating in those mid to high speed ranges. You, uh, pulsation is also one that I get a lot of good feedback. And I do get feedback on lateral, but you can, the positions are universal. You know, there might be some modifications with your feet or certain settings within the movements, but the positions are universal. So the first position I'm going to show you is a calf massage. So I, I kind of have my a little order here of, of how I do things so they flow. So the first one I start with is a calf massage. And if you're sensitive or, or um, you know, you've never done this before, you may want to put your, your foam mat on the machine just to give you a little bit of cushion. I have very long uh, shins. So mine reach the entire span of the width of the machine. You don't want to do these exercises lengthways. Just because you're getting more coverage, it's not the way that it moves. You don't want to be moving that way. So you want to be going right down the center of your machine. Your heels are just off the edge of the machine, so they're not whacking on the machine. And the meaty part of the calves and maybe the backside of the knees are on the machine. You can do this seated up. If, if um, you want to get a little bit more action going on, or you're dealing with a lot of lymph pooling in the lower legs, this is a good one to try out as well. You can just lay yourself down on the ground in front of the machine. Uh, just like when you're standing on the machine, in, in oscillating mode, how close or how far apart your feet are determines how much those legs are moving. So if you want more action, widen up your legs. If you, You'll find that you'll be able to tolerate a wider position uh, with your, your body parts like this than when you're weight bearing and standing perhaps on the machine. But just be cognizant, see what your comfort zone is and play with how far apart the legs are depending on what speed you're setting. Generally speaking, if you're going to go faster, you want to bring them closer together. Your legs shouldn't be bouncing all over the place. You shouldn't have to fight it. You should be just comfortably relaxed in this position. If you want to get a little bit deeper, lift your bum up off the ground and you put a little bit more body weight into the machine. You can turn your feet like little windshield wipers, kind of roll them around, whatever feels good to you. You can turn it into a stretch, okay? I would say for direct massage positions, you know, anywhere from one to three minutes per body part is really all that you need. I don't do all the massage positions all the time but I, I do have a few favorites. Today I'm just gonna go through the whole suite of them. So the next one that you can do is just a variation I wanna show you. It's 
swimming pool a little. If you have trouble knees, if you got swelling in the knees, skin tone issues in the knees, you can take that calf massage and add a roller to just target the knee directly. It doesn't lay completely flat on the machine. You can do some exercises. Just a quick little hack there. The next one you want to do is we're going to do the underside of the thighs. So you're going to bring yourself up onto the machine. You kind of want to just let the butt cheeks hang off the end, depending on the length of your thighs. Now for me, by my my bum is just off the edge of the machine, my knees are bent, and the, the backside of my hamstrings are both on the machine. If you're shorter, you might be able to get your glutes and your hamstrings on. Uh, if you're you know over about 5'9", five, 5'10", five, you're probably going to have to do the back of the hamstrings and the glutes in two separate sets. So this is how you do the back of the hamstrings. You can turn this into a stretch. Again, you are only limited by your imagination and your range of motion. Uh, but that's how you target the back of the thighs specifically. I have a lot of padding. Most of us have the yoga mats built in. So I find when I'm massaging the lower body parts, I don't really use a lot of padding. So the next one would be moving on a little further and just doing the glutes. Okay, however you want to do that. Um, you know where your trouble spots are. Once you get seated on the platform, the spine is now in contact and it's right down the middle of the machine. It's getting the least amount of movement. So please don't be afraid if you do have scoliosis or you've got, you know, neck issues. But if, if you're sensitive to the head vibration and we have a tendency to fight and resist it and make it worse, just relax and just lean forward a little bit and 99% of it will leave the head. If you're sitting straight up, you're going to get the most movement in the head. Just try and relax. It's not harmful. It just takes some getting used to. The next one is the, the, the love handles, the tire, that thing around the middle. So this isn't going to lose weight. This is, again, about skin tone. This is in complement with your squats and your lunges. So to do the low back, you can move yourself up. You can rest on your forearms. Perhaps you've got an aerobic step or a yoga block or a couple of them to prop yourself up. When I say just lifting, you'll find by lifting the knees up, you get the small of the back out of there. Okay, you move on a little bit. Okay. If you have low back issues right now, I'm feeling it kind of right down the middle of my back. You could always lean over, get into the hips. This hip. Play around with your angles. The more you change your position and shift your weight, you're going to feel it in different areas of the back. Okay. Outer thigh. Okay. So for outer thigh, you kind of go from this seated on a position and put your butt on one outer edge. Lay that thigh down, bring the other one up on top, just like you're laying on your side watching TV. So you want to get the outer edge of the thigh, the hip, and kind of the top of the tires on. Oh, my bum's hitting the buttons. I think I want to switch the board there. Okay. And you're just propping yourself up on your forearm. You could use a couple of pillows, whatever feels comfortable. This one, again, you would have to do, because we've got two sides, we'd have to do two reps. So after you've done your minute or two there, flip over, bring your butt. Now, where your hip, I should point this out, where your hip is on the machine, that drives the movement. So if you're finding it's way, way too much shaking, bring your hip bone a little closer to the center. That's how you decide how much shake is how far out or how close to the center your hip is. Okay? Okay. So hip. Now we got to do the tops of the thighs. So this portion here, okay? The easiest way, and you may want a mat for this one. I don't use a mat for this one, but you want to make sure that your kneecaps are off the machine. And if you don't have the range of motion to get into a push-up, you might need to start like this, get yourself down, then bring the tops of the thighs on. Okay, so that my kneecaps are just off the back of the machine. I like to lift my legs. Feels like I'm stretching my quads kind of at the same time. Okay, but it gets a little bit more weight. You can sort of roll like we were doing with the calves. Okay, this is the quads. Number one question that Debbie gets, can I do my tummy? You know what? Nobody's ever done that study, but I can guarantee you women have done this position. Many of my clients have. What you do to do the tummy is you kind of just shimmy a little bit further on from the quads being on. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what your sensitivities are. If you've got a recent incision in this area, probably not the best idea. But from a skin tone, a digestion perspective, this is certainly one I recommend trying. 
more is not better with these positions. Keep it to a minute to maybe three per body part max, okay? The last one you absolutely will require a mat for is the shins themselves. Perhaps you're dealing with varicose veins, um, you know, you get shin splints, or they just feel good. You want to put a mat on here. Your feet are going to be hooked off the back edge. You just put your, if you want a little upper body, you can put your elbows on your knees. If you don't like the sensation in the upper body, bring your hands down onto the ground, kind of like you're doing a modified cat cow, and those shins are on the machine. Because you, you don't have the padding there on the shins that you do your other body parts, I recommend putting your mat on the machine for this one. Okay? Depending how much body weight you want into it. Play with some of these positions and see what feels good to you. Again, I don't do all of them all the time. Um, I like to sit on it. I do a couple sciatic stretches. Um, you know, it depends on where your trouble spots are. But if you're doing um, massage like this, like I say, two to three minutes per body part, you do not need to do this more than once a day. You're not going to get more benefit um, or weight loss because you're massaging more. You got to do the work. You got to do the squats. You got to do the lunges. And you got to do the food. I hate to bring that up and be the devil's advocate. But you know what? If you're looking at use, losing substantial weight, yes, the food piece has to be a discussion had. Uh, I'm not a big fan of things like diet. Um, the word just makes the hair stand up. It makes me want to go have a donut. But, you know, you know whether you're, you're, you're giving your body the nutrients it needs to support uh, the goals that we're, we're trying to accomplish here. And if you need some help with that, there's all kinds of resources available. For me personally, and I know for a lot of my clients, the weight loss piece has always been about the food. I'm German, and if there's, there's flour in it and butter I can spread on it, I'm all over it. So, um, you know, be human. Don't starve yourself, but make sure that you're, you're making choices. And if you need help with those choices to support this journey long term, uh, there's lots of help out there. So um, what else can I tell you? Stay hydrated. You know, a lot of the thing with weight loss on vibration machines is the same as, as weight loss with any other piece of equipment. And that's how I really want you guys to start thinking about these machines is there, there's simply a piece of equipment in your arsenal. In my opinion, I have a big preference because you know, there's just so much appeal to what you can do with them. I bring up a lot of experience playing with them, but you know, do what you're comfortable with, do exercises you're comfortable with. And for weight loss, the big, 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 big bang for your bucks are going to be the squats the lunges and, and what I will say in addition to the weight loss, they happen to also be some of the best exercises to build that muscle strength, muscle tone, bone density, a lot of the other benefits that you're probably, whether you're looking at those benefits specifically right now or down the road, you know, you don't have to do separate things to obtain these benefits by doing these weight bearing exercises. Those muscles are pulling on the bones. There, there's all kinds of things that are part of the equation that the biggest success stories come from those that have been consistent. So stick with it, even if it's just minimally, you know, if you do feel uh, pooped out or you have chronic issues, and, and your, your, your motivation is lacking to do these exercises because things hurt. The beauty of a vibration machine is, is you can move and feel better. So do something, keep that lymph and that circulation going. You know, if you can push in a minute or two on a squat, sometimes it's just much more accommodating and, and with, the, with the added benefit of pain management and just the other things it brings to the table, it makes weight loss exercises more tolerable and more possible uh, than, than a lot of other pieces of equipment. So that's really the big secret with that. Uh, thanks, Debbie. Very helpful. Uh, Cassandra, Sharon Bowen, I'm never sure which models um, our speeds are optimal. Um, you, you're never going to hear a perfect number come out of my mind. You know, it's like going to the gym and, you know, let's say Joel and I are going to the gym and lift weights and, and you know, you know, is he, is he working harder if he's use, working harder than me, if he's lifting five pounds more than I am? You know, maybe I like to do lots of weights and just a couple of short reps, and, and he likes to do a little bit of weight and lots of reps. So there's different ways to get from point A to B, and what those speeds are is they give you the ability to progress and change things. There are basic guidelines, and I would say in oscillating, the slower speeds tend to be more your balance, your BOSU ball, the mid speeds tend to be more about relaxation, uh, some fitness. The fitness is really what you're doing on it. And then the higher frequencies, the speeds, uh, they tend to be a little smoother. They, they can be more aggressive, but it's not just about the speeds. It's also about understanding 
the biggest relationship and control that you guys have on this machine is the distance between your feet in, in that oscillating mode. How close or how far apart you stand um, changes the intensity. And wider is not better. It's more challenging, um, but there, you know, there, there's a reason those speeds give you the ability to mix it up. Uh, that you don't want the body getting too stagnant or getting used to any one thing. Uh, you'll hear me in a lot of my sessions, I recommend general use. You know, those mid to higher speeds are going to be more comfortable. If you do want to work with a wider foot position or you're doing specific type training, you may need to bring those speeds down a little bit. You should never feel like you're fighting or sliding all over the machine. That means you're going too, too fast and too far apart with, with the feet or the hands. So you should never feel like you're resisting it on, uh, you know, just to stay stable on the platform. Um, what else? What about mid back? My mid back is very tight with a couple of bulging discs. I need relief. Well, you know, it's hard to lose weight when you've got back issues unless you've got a vibration machine. It's so funny that you brought that up. This is not about weight loss, but I will show you one move. And I'm now going to choke on my coffee. <coughs> I'm not sure if Emma was able to join us today, but I was just on a call with a lovely gal in Winterpeg, Winnipeg, Canada area. And when you're dealing with low back issues, there is a really quick way, um, especially if, if you're suffering with mobility concerns. A lot of times if your back is an issue, getting down and doing some of the things I showed you is a challenge. So the very easiest way to fix the back in one move, and with your back on like a squat or something, I want your feet conservative. When you're dealing with a deficient area or you're in pain, Start with your feet in the middle and then decide how much action you're up for once the machine's going. So start with your feet close to the center, especially if you're showing someone else for the first time. And, okay, so now that I'm going and I'm grounded, that you don't want a whole lot of movement. I don't want you jarring the back if it's in pain. I want you to just kind of keep the knees undone so they're not locked but they're almost locked. So straight as you can get them without locking the knees. And I want you just leaning forward at about a 45 degree angle. You can let your arms hang, you can put them on your hips, you can do whatever feels good. But I, I want you feeling your, your back being held up by this group of muscles. Once you're in the basic position, I don't know your back. I don't know where those issues are. So maybe, maybe it's more off to the left. Well, swing your butt to the left a bit or swing your left to, butt to the right or, or tilt your bum forward or backward. Once you're in this basic position, kind of play with your angles and wiggle around until, oh, you feel that spot. And once you feel yourself targeting those weak spots or the pain, then you can decide how wide or how far apart those feet need to be. And if you're dealing with a chronic issue, especially like a bad back, you're gonna have good days and bad days. So it's always a good rule to start closer to the center, especially with your back and spine. And then if, you know, adjust the feet depending on how you're feeling for this position. If you're doing something like a squat, you're going to be able to tolerate a wider foot position. But if you're targeting the low back and the hips and there's a deficiency or pain there, start with a more conservative foot position. This isn't about beating your back up. This is about making it feel better. I hope that makes sense. And I hope it didn't sound like I was beating you up too much. Um, I hope that helps. Oh, hello, Emma. You are here, sweetie. Okay. Now, oh, mid back. Somebody asked about mid back. Okay, so mid back. What I recommend is is it from the forty five kind of arch up like a cat, like a, a puppeteer's, like pulling you at the shoulder blades, and just come up a little bit. And just again, instead of being a straight back, you're arching over and kind of you know slouching forward a little bit till you feel it in between the shoulders. If your range of motion allows, I could do this all day long and and you know, shut out what ails you, but it's kind of a whole different session. But another really easy way to get into the mid low back, hands very close on the machine for this. Just push your body forward until you feel it hitting that area in your back. If you've got the upper body strength to hold yourself up, maybe just do a little, right? But if your back is so bad, I don't want you getting down on the ground and you being stuck there for an hour. So caution, please. Work within your range of motion, and if it's not there, let's work on it so it can be there. Okay, what else do we got here? Is there a vibration level you tend to consistently use for workouts and 
Absolutely not. It really, you know, I have my preferences. Um, on, on the model I'm playing with today, let's say it was the 4D. I'm usually in that 40 to 50 range. Um, 40 to 60 for massage. Keep in mind, I've been doing this 15 years, so I got pretty good tolerance for it. But um, I like to get my goal with my workout is I like fast fatigue. I got kids, I'm homeschooling, I got lots of folks like you to look after. So, you know, if I had lots of time to do a big workout, I'd probably, you know, go, you can go longer in the slower speeds, the faster you tend to get going. And if the technique is there, you should be fatiguing quicker. But you want to mix it up. The biggest thing you want to do is mix it up within those ranges. You don't want the body getting stagnant and getting too used to any one speed, right? Um, if you're finding that you you are, your durations are really, you know, you, you used to start out at like 15 seconds and now, you know, five minutes is no problem. You shouldn't, if you really want to pick this up and have it more like a hit style workout, you should be fatiguing within a minute minute and a half and if you're not change up the setting make the position more challenging it's not about going longer and longer and longer you know perhaps you're building for endurance or stamina for something specifically but most people looking at these machines of joint problems back problems they're looking at it because it's kinder to do the exercises in this environment than on the floor i hope that makes sense um lynn you love my tips well, there's always a tip in there, but there's a lot of talking till I get to the tip, it seems. Hey, very helpful demo. Problem has been back. I can get down and up easily, uh, just have pain in the mid back when walking. Interesting. I wonder if that's a posture thing or maybe there is there like a difference in leg length. There's all kinds of things. You know, when a pain presents itself, it's, it's years and years of your body compensating. And then finally it's like, ah, oh, I got to tell you about something that's been bugging me for a while. And, and in severe cases, it develops into things like neuropathy. You know, the reason that the neuropathy in some of these conditions develops is your body just doesn't want to hear about it anymore. So it just shuts it off. So if, if you've got pain present and it's a consistent thing with certain movements, I am not a doctor. I did not diagnose. I do not treat. But what I can tell you, 15 years on these things, these machines point out deficiencies. So, you know, if you got a weak side, you tend to shift the weight. If, if you've got an issue in your low back or it's, it's coming to the surface, an old injury on this machine, it tends to point out deficiencies and your body just compensates quicker in this environment than it does on the floor. So if it's bringing an old injury to the surface or it's, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's aggravating my bad back. Well, it's not, if your bad, back's bad, activity in general and doing it wrong might aggravate it. It's not just the machine, but the machine will get you there that fatigue and exercise the muscles quicker so we tend to bring these these deficiencies to light if you haven't been exercising that long so um i would say if you know if you haven't been checked out maybe it's an alignment issue but um i i'm interested if it's just showing up as you're walking or if it's you know when you're doing other things if it's just more of a fatigue thing um and it could be tension related you know if your muscles are tight it's amazing uh, what kind of alignment issues and then neuropathy and pinch nerves, just tension. So sometimes if you've had chronic tension for years and years and years and years and years, one or two shakes ain't going to fix it. But if you, if you do notice something's working and it feels good, you know, consistency isn't just about squats and push-ups. The biggest thing sometimes with weight loss is mitigating our stress relax a bit give yourself a break once in a while so you know if you're having one of those days where you don't feel like doing the work out just the word makes you not want to do it i hate the word workout it's so demotivating but if you don't want to do the workout do some massage do some stretching do something to to give you that self-care get the lymph and the circulation moving and feeling better and if the mental and, and the meditation piece is there too sometimes that's also a big piece uh, of of uh, being successful in the long run. Um, what else? Who else wants to drill Debbie? Let's see other questions we might have here. Okay. I have rambled at you for 48 minutes with just a handful of poses. I hope those made sense. So just to sort of recap um, what I did here today. And if you've joined me since I first started, tell me where you're from. Um, if you have a vibration machine or maybe you're considering one, you know, are they great for weight loss? Yes, they can be. Um, you know, there is no perfect number. There is no perfect workout. We have preferences and, and us personally, our bodies 
have different strengths and weaknesses. And, and the sooner that you start working on what you already know how to do and incorporating, you know, maybe it's exercises that you've done in the past or exercises you know how to do and they're just getting boring. Things, you know, the, the biggest reason I think people stick with these machines is they're fun. You know, they're, they're a little funner than hitting the pavement or the treadmill. Lorenzi has a, col uh, you have a question. Go ahead, what is your question? You can go ahead and just type that in the comments. I hope you're doing well, my dear. A modification, okay? A modification, um, you're, you're, this is a, a client of mine. I'm thinking, you is your knee bothering you or what's the modification you're looking to make? Can I rest my... Keep going, girl. I need a drum roll. A hundred percent. You, uh, what Lorenzi is asking is, and you're getting down there and you're massaging your back. I'm very proud of you. Um, this woman's got a little, little more than a few, uh, challenges in her day. And, and I always see a smile on her face. Uh, yes, you can rest your feet on the wall, whatever feels comfortable. The reason I lift my legs up is it gets the low of the back into the machine where I like it. So yeah, if you need to prop them up in a wall and sometimes I'll prop them up in a wall just to sort of help myself you know, lean over, you situate your machine however you need for your own mobility, but that's absolutely a modification that a lot of folks have played with, no problem. Um, Sherry, hi Debbie, Sherry from Phoenix here. This is my uh, this is my first is to me one of your videos and I think, oh, oh, thank you very much, Sherry, you're very sweet. Um, you know, we, we've all um, got a lot of things that, that need to be fixed if all of our problems were the same. Uh, my job would be a heck of a lot easier. I, I've just been playing with these machines a, a lot longer than most folks, and I've been fortunate enough uh, to work with anything from the medical grade, um, you know, to, to hundreds of different consumer machines and um, a lot of different bodies. There, there's probably not a medical condition out there I haven't worked with at least a couple of times. And, um, you know, uh, there, there's just so many ways that this machine can not only accelerate things like weight loss that we're talking about today, but just improve that overall uh, quality of life. And it's not always about using the machine for weight loss, you know. Maybe you used to be a runner, or maybe you used to be a biker, and, and you know, time and, and injuries have taken their toll, and you're just not able to do these activities that you love anymore. You know, the, the biggest win I've seen with vibration machines outside of the, the results they themselves give you is, is they're, they're a catalyst to getting back to those things that you miss. You know, so if you can't do the bike anymore, you can't do the walks anymore, using this machine just to train some of those areas, you know, for those of you that have, um, maybe you used to be a ballet dancer, you know, muscle memory is a fabulous thing. It never forgets. It, you know, you, you can recondition very quickly and get back to those disciplines, but it might take some time and a little bit of patience. You know, you're going to overdo it. The worst you're going to do on a machine, if you do overdo it, is you're going to be a little sore the next day. Big deal. Just like the gym. If you have overdone it, the best thing that you can do is get on it for a minute or two and utilize its recovery aspect. So, you know, it's also a great weight loss tool because you can also use it as a recovery tool. Again, you know, I, I kind of tend to be over the top and do 90% of what I do on the machine because this is what I do for a living. But for me, it's the, the, the time kill and the kindness on the joint that keeps me with it. But, you know, there's a lot of other pieces of, of equipment many of you have. There's ways that you can incorporate this into your existing routines to make them even better and even better get you back to them if you've taken a hiatus from them. So don't lose hope, okay? Um, I have a Rumblix and I love it. What is best to get rid of menopause belly? menopause belly. You know, th there's a different kind of fat in that midsection, the visceral fat, and it it's different than any other fat in your body. You can do crunches all day long. It's not going to affect it. The, the best exercise for, for the tummy is squats. You don't get to pick where it comes from or goes. You can certainly target those areas, maybe with some of the massage for the skin tone piece, but squats are the best bang for your buck and lunges for burning calories. You want to fire up those quads and those glutes. Those are what's going to take the mass down in, in the, the quickest fashion. I just got a rhythm a couple weeks ago. I'm surprised at how many different body parts I can actually work on it. Again, you know, I, 
I wasn't an exercise guru when I came into this, Sherry, but the more you experiment, the biggest thing I try to give my clients in these sessions is, is just confidence. This is not some scary shock electrode thing, but if you're not an exercise guru or you have sensitivities, fear, you know, our body always guards and protects and it's no different in this environment. So don't be fearful. If you are feel fearful, start in a stool, you know, don't wait when you get this thing in the box, get on it, get it out of the box and get, do something on it. Don't sit there and let it intimidate you for a week or two and then return it just because you were too scared to give it a try. That's why these sessions exist. That's why the life pro, you know, tries to help. There's all kinds of things in their boxes from starting tips to these manuals. There's the VIP page. There's a million tools to help you be successful. You don't need to be alone. And you know, one of the biggest things with these machines, I think with weight loss is there's, there's a euphoric effect. You know, they make you feel good about yourself. They, they give you energy and that makes, you know, some of the, the workout and the ugly stuff maybe a little bit more acceptable and possible. Okay. I got machines a few months ago and love it. Sandra, I do too. You know, I always say they're kind of addictive, aren't they? Once you start, you know, whether you started for weight loss, whether you started for wellness, whatever motivated you to start using a vibration machine, you know, and, and if, if I were to come up with a book of every move ever experimented on by Debbie in a show or in a studio, it would be this thick, but I didn't start with all those ideas. You guys, each of you, no matter how inactive or active you are now, you've all got a few moves that you know how to do, whether it was from yoga class or a few things you learned in gym. This is an environment. Mimic those things in this environment. Are you a golfer? Practice your golf swing on it. You know, you are only limited by your imagination. Some of the basics I show you on the machine are just to make you feel comfortable. I want you to feel comfortable to experiment with what you know how to do and, and you'll figure out what speed or what foot placement works best for you. There is no magic. I had it in symbols and what, 20 minutes of being delivered. Thank you, Sherry. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You do all this homework and all this research to make the decision. Get on it when you, and, and just, you know, the sooner you start playing with it, the more you'll realize that they're really not that scary. But you know what is scary is all the other things we've tried that we never stuck with, that we spent money on. You know, we get this regret thing going, oh, so don't doubt yourself. Don't overthink it. You know, don't tell anybody you're even doing it. Take the pressure away. Just start moving and feeling better. And, and the weight loss piece becomes a lot less complicated. If I can do it, honest to God, and if I can be the person that like teaches other people, you guys can do this. Trust me. Just don't make it so complicated. Trust yourself and listen to that gut a little bit more. Reposting. Hi, Melody from Atlanta. I've just been using my Rumblex. What is your best audio video advice for weight loss? Also for lift drainage, do we build up to more than 10 minutes a day. Um, I, I love to see you start this from the beginning. No, you know, I don't put a time on it for weight loss, um, strength, you know, those physical fitness changes. It's about getting that body to fatigue and for weight loss, those best, best exercises are going to be squats and lunges. Um, if you're a post 40 woman, you want to try and do those earlier in the day, wrap up that metabolism. You know, the side benefit is it's going to give you some energy, some mental clarity. You know, sometimes I do a squat here and there just because I've been sitting too long and my sciatic's starting to flare up. But if you're pushing yourself to fatigue, you really shouldn't need to do more than about three to four minutes on those legs. If you are a conditioned athlete, you know, yeah, there's probably people that can do 20 minutes, a half hour on the machine. Great. But, you know, what, what are we trying to accomplish here? Are you also doing that on top of everything else you're doing? The machine is meant to reduce time and effort. So that's the basic premise of how I teach. It's not about going longer and longer and longer and longer unless you're building for endurance. If you're not fatiguing within, you know, one to two minutes in, in your positions and you're truly honestly pushing yourself and putting some effort into it, then you're ready to move on. Make that position more challenging. Maybe pick up you know, a couple of weights, maybe close your eyes and try it blindfolded for a while. Change something to make those changes progress and, and, and your, your improvements continue. I bought a machine for my brother who's a cyclist. He loves it. Cyclists love this for keeping those muscles conditioned off race time recovery. Um, I have a number of cyclists that have put boards and different things on the plate so they can wear their shoes and train. I've got ballerinas, you know, try to train to how you train. So that, again, this is just an environment. 
Um, I've got a lot of guys that have taken the butt end of their one of their wheels off and placed it stationary, and their their feet are on the machine, and their hands are on the you know anything you can do to mimic that environment. And from a performance standpoint, the machine will, will offer that benefit as well. That's really really cool. Um, and a lot of us aren't so good about winding down. You know, if you're a competitive athlete and you're not loving your recovery routine or you're not doing it because, oh, it takes so long, great. It doesn't have to be a workout. One of the biggest things with weight loss is some of the time and effort you're putting into it. You shouldn't have to pay the price the next day. Make sure you're stretching, doing some of the massage positions I've showed you are a perfect way to do a wind down as well or a warm up. Uh, I can't see enough good things about it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you got a workout buddy now, Lorenz. That's the way to go, right? Lorenz is is dealing with a few medical concerns, and I I really admire um, you know her willingness to to find something that works for her, and and uh, we all need a kick in the butt, and and I hope I give that to you once in a while. Um, but don't beat yourself up. You know, part of the reason that I'm I'm staying in shape and sticking with these is because I got to be accountable to you guys. If I didn't do my sessions, you know, I might just be doing donuts on the couch too motivation and sticking with this regularly and to me the consistency thing and and sticking with it is is as easy as the routine it doesn't need to be a big thing it's sticking with it consistently and keeping those positions simple yet effective for your range of motion and body type are going to be your biggest wins i am probably unless i've missed anyone i have rambled an hour so i certainly do not want to overstay my welcome and uh, i'm sure you guys will see me again here on uh the uh, wonderful Life Pro page. I can't say enough about them. I love working with their plates and many of you as their clients. Um, if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to post those in the feed and we will get to those. Uh, if you didn't get to watch the entire session, we will be reposting uh, a recording at some point on the page here. And uh, I uh, thank you for those of you that joined us today. I hope some of these tips resonated with you. There is no exact recipe. Find something that appeals to you, something that's easy for you to get into the mindset. And uh, consistency is going to win the race in, in the long run, you guys. Thank you so much for listening to my ramble. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Sherry. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great Monday and don't work too hard.